Hi, Super Mario Miss is back again with another, a little bit shorter review this time. I'm gonna show you some video games actually this time. And I'm gonna make a review later on some consoles and so on. I have promised that, so that will come a little bit later. Anyway, I'm gonna show you some weird and obscure games. Some games that are... The, the first game I'm gonna show you was licensed to Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. But I have a version before it was licensed to Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. Now I'm gonna show you this game here. And this game here is a good favorite of mine. This is a flipper game called Dino Land. And I think this game is cute. This game is very good. And this is the unlicensed version I have here. The cover art on this one is one of the best I have seen on an unlicensed version of a game. So uh, if you can get your hands on this one, if you have the original game and you want to try to get this one as well, I would recommend you to try that, because this is beautiful. And this is, by the way, of course the Japanese version. So if I turn it at the side, it has inscriptions in Japanese here. And this is the back of the cartridge. It's a flipper game, but I think it's very beautiful, the artwork on this one. And I love this game a lot. Dino Land. And if I open up here, this is the cartridge. It's a miniature of the of uh, the game. So I think it's beautifully made. It's a Japanese game. I don't care about if it is Japanese or not because my Mega Drive, the European Mega Drive that I have, runs these games perfectly well. It's modified. So uh, this is the back of the cart. Nothing much to see here. Only some cautions, precautions, uh, or how to treat the uh, the cartridge. So this is Dino Land. Let's see if I can get it a little bit closer without making it blurry. I think it's beautiful. So this is Dino Land for you, and it, this is the unlicensed version, and I like it a lot. I like it. As you can see on the top here, this uh, needs to be glued on a little bit here because the top part has no glue left on it. Dino Land. I, I don't know about you, but I think this is the best artwork. If you search on YouTube on Dino Land, you will find uh, the original. Uh, someone show you the original. I only have this one. And this one is uh, the unlicensed version of it. And I think this game is cute. It's a very good game. And I like it. I like it a lot. It has many different levels. If you can hunt down a copy of this, I would recommend that. Next I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put that over there. This one has no cover. I managed to get my hands on this one as well. Super Mario World Bros. Why they have shown a picture of a sports team on the outside, I don't know. Don't be fooled about that, because this is actually a good uh, homebrew version of a Super Mario World game never released on Super Nintendo at all. And I will say that this game is pretty good. I managed to beat the game. It was a little bit hard, but I managed to beat it. But this is a good game. This is uh, When you play it, you will immediately uh, see that this is another version of Super Mario World with new gra graphics. Actually, this has very good music as well. And if you can hunt down a copy of this one, I will recommend it a lot, because this is actually a pretty good game. I was surprised when I played this for the first time. So I will recommend it a lot. This is the back. It's only a white sticker on it with no information at all, at all because this is a homebrew game. But uh, it's a Japanese game as well. As I mentioned earlier, I can play any Japanese games without any trouble. And if you can get hunt down a copy of this one, I can recommend you to do this. If you have one of these Blaze consoles with, uh, uh, that was made after Sega went uh, didn't produce any more consoles, you can plug this right in and just plug it to NTSC and it will run right, right away. On the Mega Drive, normally you need a action replay or something like that to plug in between. And uh, it will run there as well. Super Mario World Bros. 
don't be fooled by the theme on the front here that they are uh, it looks like they are playing tennis or something with a shell here this is actually not a sports game this is super mario world and i like this game a lot and i can recommend it a lot next game i'm gonna show you oh i touched the camera let's not try to do that too much it's a super nintendo game and this game has been released in europe as well but this is only a little just to show you because super donkey kong yeah in japan uh, the donkey kong series is called super donkey kong instead of donkey kong country uh, just to show you that uh, they had another name uh, in Japan for this. So in Europe and America it's called Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong Country 2. In uh, Japan it's Super Donkey Kong and Super Donkey Kong 2 and so on. On the back of this one it shows you it's a Super Famicom cartridge. I don't know if the camera can make it precisely up but uh, there you go. I will put, put that uh, over here. And just for the fun of it, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna show you one more. You know how the cartridge F0 looks like in Europe. In Japan, it looks like this. You just say plain write out F0, and it has some writings here. And I'm gonna read that for you. This is the first adventure of a new hero, Captain Falcon. Little is known about him except that he was born in the city of Port Town and has become the galaxy's greatest prize hunter. That's exactly what it says here. Oops, that's too close I can see. Uh, so you can see that there are some differences between the cartridges, but the game is the same. And I just want to show you. I'm gonna show you one more, but this time it is a European cartridge. Hold on. Oh, and I'm gonna find... A game I can recommend a lot if you like arcade games. This game is a little bit special. This is Mr. Do, given up by Black Pearl. As you can see on the top here, it says Arcade Classic. This has been approved with a seal from uh, Nintendo as well. B believe it or not, this game has been released on Super Nintendo with 8-bit graphic and 8-bit music. It's that good. Uh, so this, the Nintendo Corporation released this as an 8-bit game on a 16-bit console. And this is one of the few games I know that are uh, an 8-bit game co converted to 16-bit console. And you might think, well, you get shitty graphic and shitty music. Actually, yeah, it's the original music, but I will not use the word shitty. Because I like this game a lot. If you like Dig Dug... And you have played that a lot. I can recommend you this a lot. This is one of my favorite games to Super Nintendo, believe it or not. I have other games like Castlevania. And I got uh, Super Mario World, Zelda Link to the Past and so on. But I'm going to show you uh, more of my games a little bit later. But I will recommend this game a lot. Because this is good. This is fun. It has two player. And... Uh, it's, you're throwing a ball in this game to hit the enemies, but if you are not careful, the ball might come back to you and hit you instead. Or the two-player ball might hit you if you are not... A, so you get a lot of fun out of this game. This game contains 10 different levels, and when you have gone through the 10 levels, you will start on the first level again, but it will be much harder. So I will recommend this game a lot, if you can get a copy of this. I will recommend it. Mr. Do for Super Nintendo. 8-bit game on a 16-bit console, believe it or not. And when they do that, you know you have a good game in your hand when they can do that natively without alter the music or alter the graphic. Then you have a good game on your hands. Thank you for watching this review and have a nice day. More review is coming up in a short moment time. Bye!